as you see here, you'll see the quickness in the water here, which is what we were teaching, you know, five years ago. Okay. And, I mean, Jill's one of the coaches, and she's a phenomenal paddler. But this shows a little quicker in the water, and then this will pan out. And you see, so like one count in the water, yeah, two counts out? roughly is what it is. When you look outside, you see the difference in the length in the water, and how the... We did the first video on paddle stroke technique. We talked about the background of it and why we're doing it a little bit differently, or why you're doing it a little bit differently now. Right. So let's see it in action on examples that you um, can display. Okay, yeah, so a lot of times when I do clinics, I like to show pictures of people doing the things that we're trying to learn, and a lot of this stuff that I learned recently was from you know, Gerard Teba, Shell's coach. He's in the mainland a lot, he's been helping me teach my guys in Newport and the girls and helps me with the Dana Point girls over there and so Teva Richmond. their coach teach, taught you? Yeah, so the last two years in Newport at the Aquatic Center we had um, uh, Gerard coming in. He comes in as a really good friend that lives there so he comes for a month or two at a time and then we get together, we play music, we paddle together and eventually I got him to come help me coach my guys and I says, you know, come with me and he says, oh no, that's your group. I said, no, you come with me because I want to learn what you guys are doing, you know. So eventually he came out and he started helping us a lot. And um, I mean, we were very blessed, I felt, you know, like this guy is one of the best coaches in the world. And now we're getting to learn what the Tahitians do because if you just watch them in the video, you can't really see or figure out what's going on. Like if I just watched the videos of the Tahitians, I wouldn't have been able to figure it out. But you paddle with these guys and you listen to them and then you go, oh, I get it. Okay, so it helped me really understand what was going on. So now I'm able to teach that a little bit to the people around. Okay. Yeah. So what I use when I do clinics or work with my teams is the first thing I talk about is length and depth of the blade in the water. You know, and back in the day we taught set the blade, then pull it. We taught quick through the water, rest in the air, right? And what they're doing over there and what they're teaching us is opposite, right? But a lot of the mechanics are the same. You're looking forward angle on the catch, loading the blade, making sure it's locked, being patient on the pull. But there, you know, what they do is the, when you as soon as that blade comes out of the water, the boat starts to slow down. So now the tempo, instead of being one in the water, two in the air, is opposite. It's two in the water, one in the air. So you catch the boat before it slows down. So when I look at the video, a lot of people used to think, oh, the Tahitians have this super high cadence short stroke. Right? But the fact is, the stroke isn't that short. There's some pretty good length on that stroke. That's why they go so fast. That's why the boat travels so far every time they take a stroke. So this video here is shell about four or five years ago. It was the first Olamau on a big island. And we were testing out our new prototype, six Is all the channel races for all the channels? That was the one that went around the big island. Oh, okay. So it stayed on the island. Uh -huh. And we had just started building the Unlimited and this was our prototype. So they tried it out this day and they ended up using it in the race. You know, they won all three legs, but I got some video of them that day. So this is really good to see because to me, I call it the myth buster. Everybody thinks real fast, real short in the water. And if you watch these guys paddle, you see, I like to use this because it shows how far the reach is. And when you look at the Tahitians or these top teams like Shell, EDT, OPT, Paddling Connection, every paddle angle is the same, every body looks the same, everybody's body's moving in, sync, in sequence with each other, you know? But I always like to use, okay, this is where he sets his blade, right? Way out in front. In flat water, kayaking, surf ski, we always taught elbow to torso is where you start exiting your stroke. When you look at what the Tahitians do, you look at the length in the water, same thing, elbow to torso. Right? So I like to use this video as length and depth in the water. Because to me, that's one of the things people get mixed up on the most. People think, fit, real fast, real short, just cadence, cadence, cadence. The fact is, short stroke, you go short. Long stroke, you go long. Now, the farther you go, travel every stroke, the better. There is a point of where you're pulling too far back there is a point of not having any more leverage and usually that is right about when the elbow reaches the torso. Okay. So this is showing how long to pull back and how deep you push yeah. the blade into the water. Yeah. And I also use it as a, a timing thing okay. because the timing on this is just ridiculous. Right? I mean literally these guys look like one path. Can you play in a team that again? Boat. Can we see? Yeah. yeah absolutely. And you'll see in this video, it's longer in the water, short in the air. Right. Can you play it in slow motion? Yeah. 
can see. So, so are their hands in the water too or no? Their hands get wet. Okay. And when I teach people, especially if they don't understand how to grab the water really well or get the blade deep enough uh -huh. in the beginning, I say get your hand wet. Okay. If your hand gets wet, you know the paddle's in the water. Stand up, of course you cannot, you know, but it's all a feel. You could, it just would be kind of weird. Yeah, you'd have to be kneeling down. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, so the, the distance then, you know how before it was like, when you get past your hip, you're taking the paddle out, it's that farther now? It usually puts your bottom hand about mid to two thirds back by your thigh. So it definitely puts your paddle behind your hip a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's okay because you know, there is leverage from here all the way to here and pulling, right? When I can't push back strong, but I can pull this way strong. Okay. So even though the paddle goes back, kind of, the paddle's going yeah. back to about here. here to see and even, thing. and the paddle goes to this angle, it's okay? Kind of. It's not, not hurting you. Yeah. There's theories that people think you're pulling down the boat, but I think the fact is that you're not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the top hand you're pushing, is it, you're focusing mostly on top hand pushing down or now, your torso now moving? Now we don't even mention rotation, twist. So don't worry about it then. We talk about how much water you're grabbing, how heavy does it feel up front, is it locked? And we talk a lot about pressing down with the top hand and using the opposite lat instead of using the lat that only on your pulling side. So we're trying to use the whole body and not just half the body, basically. So that whole thing where you put your foot on the door and you're pulling the doorknob and so it's on. It's probably 60% of your power and the other part is coming from Oh, so core. you're still doing that You then. still are doing a portion of that, absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah. So you're still twisting a little bit. Yeah, and most people, that comes natural. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. before where it's like twist full on, get that arm way up there in the front and so on, not yeah. as big of a deal then. Well, not as much because now, if you're going to be using that top hand for pressure in the front, I mean, there's mistakes that happen, right? Top hand goes forward, you lose pressure. Top mm. hand goes down, you get pressure. Right. Okay. So if you have that top hand pressure and you're rotating too much, you lose that opposite, the drive from the top hand. That's kind of how I look at it. So on these guys, then, you were going to see the top hand is just moving down. It's almost down and back yeah. then, yep. right? It is, if you watch it. The pressure is down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I try to teach more right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like this guy, his hand is going down and back. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it goes down. And is the paddle straight up and down or something it's still a little bit angled? You look for always a slight forward angle on the catch. You know, we have a 10 degree on these paddles. You know, most stand up paddles have a degree on the front. As long as the paddle is not angling back and slipping in the water and you're holding on the water, I think you're good. Yeah. And then what about the angle, like when you, when he's sitting, if, he's, if this is the boat, yeah. and then the, you know how the paddle can be like that because it's. You don't have it straight up and down. You you're want not it straight up and down. Oh, always. Because anytime that blade goes away from the boat, you're pushing the boat or the board to the side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. Okay. Yep. So instead of pushing forward, we're pushing down. Yep. It's a longer stroke in the water. It's time in the water. Yeah, okay. So sometimes I'll. But it's slower. It is. Well, you you want the paddle. I mean, basically, you don't want the paddle to move, right? You want the uh -huh. paddle to go in the water. The slower the craft, the slower the paddle is going to come through the water. Because okay. that's how long it takes that craft to get there. A six man moves faster than a one man, you know, so you'll see a higher, ca a higher cadence, you'll see it moving through the water or the boat moving a little bit quicker. Stand up to me is even slower, right? So you have, and a longer blade, you have more patience. You have to be really patient. It's possible to pull maximum power slowly. And that's the really efficient guys who are doing that. Yeah. So when we hear like on a downwind run from Hoikai to, to um, Waikiki, and say that, you know, like on a boat like Eukai or Pueo or one of those, the boats are so fast so that the longer your paddle's in the water, it's actually dragging it instead of letting the boat go fast. Is that yeah, accurate I don't, or not? I don't think it's accurate. Oh. I don't think it's accurate. Um, the only time you're dragging is if you're pulling that blade or you're so slow that you're creating pressure on the backside of that blade and you're going to feel that. Okay. You know, I don't see that happening. I mean, when you're chasing a bump, you got to go, right? Huh. I mean, it's, but what we're trying to do now is we're increasing the recovery time or the time in the air to get that bump. So when you know. we're trying to catch bumps out there, and it feels like, you know, you take these really deep, longer yeah. strokes, but it feels like, oh, I'm not really moving it, versus something that's like the, the kind of quick taps, where yeah. it's like catching less water, is, are there reasons to do that ever, or not really? I'm just traveling what? wrong, or what? Well, I don't think you just ever want to spin your wheels, uh -huh. right? I mean, when the boat sits off a bump, and you put the blade in, it's going to be hard, because it's not moving. You know, you get 
get as much as you can on it. You're not going to pull it way out the back. You're not going to be super relaxed on that pull. You're going to be hard on it. You're going to try to get some distance on it. Then you're going to try to get back to the water really quick. Or it could just be timing is off or something. If it feels like you're pulling hard, but you're not really getting onto the bump, but sometimes these letters. Yeah. Oh, counts. absolutely. Like, you know, if you're timing. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you want to kind of wait for that bump to start to help you before you really get on it. You, know, so you don't want to be paddling uphill. Uh -huh. You mean you get that push on the tail that when it lifts? Yeah, and it depends on the canoe or the board too, because some boats or you know boards they'll pick up the bump a little later and they like that. And some of them you got to go earlier. Kind of depends on the equipment sometimes. Yeah. That's why I think it's so technical. And every you know, and everybody's different, and everybody's got a different size body, and everybody's got a different technique and genetics, and you can get pretty close to doing it right. But if you're shorter, you don't have to reach extra because you're a short person. You just have to be really efficient for your size. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. It really, it's all about efficiency. And then is there a difference then if you're a taller, bigger guy? So like someone like, like me, I'm six feet, like 220-ish now, so. So you're gonna be able to have more time in the water, right? Because you got more leverage, you got longer point. Okay. If you get in a team boat, you know, kayak or six man. So say I was gonna stroke a boat and I look back and I see you back there and you got these long arms, I'm gonna be stroking going, I'm gonna give this guy a little more time because he's gonna help me more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was time in the water and push down, and then yeah. the next important stage would be? Well, this I use a lot for uh, length in the water okay. and um, synchronicity. Okay. And also if you watch and you look back at this, you'll see these guys changing. Tatias change usually around on the eight or nine. They call that change. And it's because, like I think it's because there's so much pressure on their blade every time they take a stroke, they need to get over. Like you should have all that water on that paddle. And that's what I teach my guys is if you're calling on 15, in a team boat, then you're not getting enough water in there. You should be feeling it around nine or ten. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So the feeling is much more like you're lifting weights than than right. It's, it's you know that it is kind of like you're powered up almost. It is. It is. It's exactly. Yeah. Um, whenever somebody wants to pull fast in the water, I ask them, "How long does it take you to do a pull up?" How long does it take you to bench press your weight? It's never going to be quick mm -hmm. because you have to take that time to move that weight. So that's kind of something you, I think, you really want to think about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah what is this one? Then? This video. This is EDT. It's a okay. training video they put out online. I think it was on Vogue um, or one of the, the things over there. But on a warm-up pace, it really shows beautifully how much pressure they use on the top end. Sometimes people think this is slow motion, but it's not. This is warm up, you know. But you see the pressure. Warm up means and that they're getting they ready to do it. This is actually a video of their sprint workouts, you know, starts and stuff. But to me, this is very helpful because it shows the pressure on the top hand and how long they press. All the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's right, Mana. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows the quick to the front, you know, and, um, and the timing and. How much pressure and things like that. So I like to use this video when I so help people. So the point on this one is that they're pushing down the whole yeah. time. And then you see here, it's a sprint, right? Is that George Cronstadt on the back? You no, know, I don't know. But even on the sprint, you still there's a lot of length on the blade. So even on this one, if you're counting it out, then it's still two in the water, one up. It just looks super fast. Yes, exactly. Because they're moving fast. Yeah. It, yeah, and that's exactly it. You know, the boat's moving fast, so that blade's coming through a little quicker, right? Okay. Yeah. Like you see here, you know, everybody thought they were just tapping, but when we took shell and other, you know, videos that we had and you slowed it down frame by frame, even at a high rate, it was still a lot of length in the water. That's why I think on this canoe paddling, it seems like for a lot of lay people, you think, oh, I'm just going to jump in. I'm going to grab the paddle and pull it through the water or yeah. so on. But it's so technical. There's it is. so much technicality that... It's a very technical sport. Yeah. And then we tend to overanalyze it mm -hmm. and make it too hard. You know, so a lot of times, like when I was teaching this with the groups I had in the in California, it was we took the mechanics out of the stroke. So if someone said to me, "Oh, so you mean I turn my hips?" I go, "No, no. So you just go grab water a little farther forward. Mm -hmm. You know, feel it. Hold on to the boat. What are you feeling in the paddle?" A lot of times, that your body will naturally do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a, to me, it's a simpler way of looking at it. And right. if someone has a problem with slipping somewhere, then I'll go to the technical part and say, okay, you need to do this with this angle to try to grab this and get more blade. So you do you know, do like blade. private one-on-one coaching? I do. I do a lot of 
private clinics. I've been doing a ton of team clinics lately. Okay. Yeah. So do you go in for one specific team, or is it multiple teams? That come multiple out? teams. I have through the summer. I'm pretty booked right now. Okay. I was in Maui. I helped the Hawaiian Canoe Club men the other day. That was really fun. And you know, you bring in a new concept, and it's so I use a lot of video, and I actually videotape them, and I'll analyze their stroke, you know, and kind of show them. Okay, you're doing this a little bit wrong. You want to do this to get this. It's been good. So they contact yeah. you through Pulakia Designs. Yeah, mostly. Com, mm -hmm. And then, yeah. then book, book you for the clinic and right. so on. Right. Okay. Because this is, as we were talking before, it's almost like dancing. I mean, everybody's different. It's like personality. Everyone's got a different personality. Well, I it's just little intricate it, things. You've I call it. Be I there. call it dancing. You know, I right. say it is dancing. You know, mm -hmm. out there and. It's tough to really, I mean, there's a lot of, that's, there's a lot to it. So it's tough to kind of get it quick and just be like, okay, I got this. Right. Usually I come into a clinic and I'll help somebody and I'll look at what they're doing and everybody's different, everybody's got a different issue. And I'll say, okay, you need to work on this two things for the next three months. And I'll give them those things and how to work on it. So you video them at the clinic and yeah. then break it down with them? Yeah. That's how, kind of like this, but it's yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That, that would be super helpful. Yeah. And then if you, I always say, if you fix one or two things in three months, you've done an amazing job. Because the body has such habits, and you have to break those habits to get better, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then so, are you mostly doing clinics in summer, or? Yeah, mostly round? summer. Some winter stuff, but not too much. A lot of mainland clinics, and then mm -hmm. winter's a little bit. Yeah, are there open less. clinics, like um, people can just um, sign up some, and pay and come? Some we do, yeah. Okay, and then yeah. you find out on Pool K Designs yeah, too, exactly. or on the website? Yeah, on the website. Okay. Pool K at Pool K Designs at Gmail or Pool K at Designs at Gmail dot com. That's what it is. So for you mean yeah. to email you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's try this. So let me see. And then there's one other thing I like to use here, and this is the Catalina race last year. So when I was learning all this from the my friends from Tahiti, I was curious if it would work with women as well as men. So I went over to the Dana Point team and I helped their top group. And within the first year, they went from being you know, a second, third place team to actually winning at a very low stroke rate, very efficient. Did you say last year? Uh, last year, they won last year and the year before. Last year, they broke the record. It was kind of nice. Um, but at a low stroke rate, and they're not uh, all-star women. You know, They're good athletes, but very dedicated and very... It's not Team Bradley? No, it's not. We're, you know, I worked with Team Bradley forever and stuff. So amazing team to work with but you have phenomenal water women that come mm -hmm. together that you organize and clean up and just kind of put the right pieces of the puzzle in the right place and you get results because they're, they're amazing you know mm -hmm. this was more of a group that was just under that that you had to kind of work with but we decided we're going to work as a team as well as we can to perfection to make up for you know the individual strength that you might need to compete at that level yeah so I like to use this. This is uh, Lana Kila Canoe Club, which is, you know, they're winning. They've been an amazing team for the last 10 years, as long as I can remember. I mean, they were just the top of the game, and they are still an unbelievable team. Mm -hmm. But they are, they're still going a little bit on the quicker side through the water. You know, strength-wise, they're, you know, I think, hands down, stronger than the Dana Point team. But because of the efficiency of the Dana Point team it allows them to run with the Monaquila women and sometimes because at the end of the race they have more because they were paddling more efficiently they can get away in front yeah. so as you see here you'll see the quickness in the water here which is what we were teaching you know five years ago okay and I mean Jill's one of the coaches and she's a phenomenal paddler But this shows a little quicker in the water, and then this will pan out. And you see so, like one count in the water, yeah, two counts out. Roughly is what it is. And when you look outside, you see the difference in the length in the water, and how the precision is a little better, right? So this makes it helps out a lot. It makes a big difference on it. It's like two strokes for one almost. You know? In a way, you know, I think the Dana Point women, and I kind of feel like a women's team is going to need a little slower stroke rate than the men in a way because the boat's moving slower. That's kind of my thought on it, you know. Um, yeah, and these guys are now thinking two in the water and one in the air instead of one in the water and two, you know, opposite. Yeah. And then that, does it show where they're kind of catching up and moving forward on, in this video? In this video, this is the Vohi video, so uh -huh. they, they did the whole race. They came over okay. from Tahiti and they, because um, we had a Tahitian team, the guys are actually helping us, came wow. over and raced Catalina and beat the NAC guys, which, you know, 
we got second with our NAC team, which was kind of fun because the guys teaching us won, and then we were right behind them. You know, not right behind them; they were kind of hard mm -hmm. to see, but you know. But this doesn't show that when it happened. Can but you show that again? So this one we're looking at cadence, kind of. This is more uh, like stroke rate, cadence, speed in the water, timing of of. The, for me, I look for all the shafts. Because that's a nice stroke, right? That's, yeah, it's very nice. It's still nice yeah. stroke. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's just fast. It's just but in your boat too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's in your it's boat. It's just a little rushed. Where you see outside here, you see how they take their time in the water, and a lot of the timing is actually a little better, right? So it makes a big difference. That's almost like got to be somewhat intimidating when you watch the crew coming up on you, and it looks like they're not really working yeah. as hard. It's yeah, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. I mean, the first big difference in the stroke rate, yeah. right? So the big, to me, the first year I was coaching the outrigger men and we were in Molokai and it was flat and it was when the Tahitians first came back. And we had been in the lead a little bit, we had a good team and they went a little bit wrong way in, the, in Molokai and then they made their change and they came down to us. When they went by us, I remember thinking, oh my God, these guys look perfect. And then I thought to myself, until we learn to be like this, hard to compete. Yeah. Because you know when I was watching something where they were they were commentating on the Molokai race and they were talking about the stroke rate of the Tahitian team at like 70 something yeah. strokes or so on. Does that affect this then? Because if it's a slower kind of well, case, would, would that you really rate look go at down? What's happening no? right now, like in Tahiti on a long race, Hawaii Kinui or one of those events, the rate will come up for the bump or maybe on the starts. In the middle, it's not so high. You know, in Molokai, they're coming out of the boat all the time. So to them, that's a sprint race. Oh. You know, and there's bump. So what the Tahitians have that I feel like we haven't mastered yet is even the teams I'm working with is they have that second gear where they can do this at a high rate and the boat really goes so they can shift into that but you watch them they'll come back down in like a calm race or so something. how exactly are down. they doing that when afterwards when they come on the beach they start smoking and stuff like that no nah, that was the old days I don't oh, think they're smoking not anymore. smoking anymore <laughs> no, the training is amazing you know, they would like paddle right up the beach and then then they like be smoking I was like what yeah, the heck is going uh, on yeah. around here that was the old days oh yeah so now none of that then now is you know they wake up 4, 4.30 in the morning, train two hours in the gym, go to work. These guys get off work two hours in the boat. I mean, they're doing the work, yeah. You know what's interesting to me is that their coach would come and coach um, the others too as well. I mean, that's just really awesome. For us, it's, I mean, they've been... Real a, collegial. It's you know? been amazing, you know. they. I mean, they became friend, good friends, you know, with us. And like my guys from Newport Aquatics, and when they go to Tahiti, they stay with the Paddling Connection guys and they train with them. and. And they're like, like it's like family. You know? Yeah, it's very very nice. That's the yeah. good. That's the. Yeah. I think maybe it might even be the best thing about this whole paddling sport, especially in the beginning of stand up. Yeah. So collegial. Everybody's kind of family like and so yeah. on. Once it starts losing that, then mm, you it's not keep as appealing. I mean, that's what makes it fun, right? Yeah. yeah. But that is, I think, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. You know. Okay. So most of, if you're gonna do like private lessons in clinics, are they mostly done in the mainland or are they mostly done in Hawaii? Depends. I'm here in Hawaii a third of the time, maybe now. Mm -hmm. It just depends on where I'm at when. Okay. And we book usually a couple months out. Yeah. You ever do like one man clinics? Yeah. Yeah, we do them sometimes too. Depends on where I am. Like I would, I did one in Florida recently when okay. I was there. Yeah. So maybe the best thing would be to like email you the pool kid designs yeah. at gmail.com, yeah. and then maybe then you can you shoot that out when when there's yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A lot of times you check and see if what town I'm going to be in when for what events, mm -hmm. and then I put clinics around there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So from today we have it's it's a longer stroke in the water, top hands pushing down, and the count is different. Yeah. One, uh, one outside, two inside the water. Yeah, and, it, and I don't really I like to say time in the water more than length of stroke. So I think you know it would be yeah. actually really good to practice something like that, and then make it to a clinic to see if you're actually really doing it. Correctly. Yeah, or a lot of like a lot of the clubs I do now, I'll come in and I'll do a clinic for them, and it's tough to kind of get all this stuff wrapped around your head on the first day. You ever thought about yeah. trying to do? So like I go back uh, and online? I'll do a I'll do a maintenance. We have talked about it. We have, and actually I got a friend working on some things right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen different apps and stuff too that can work with that. But yeah. you know, they would send you a video of themselves, and you chat with them on a video chat. And yeah, was, and I worked with this kid. He was in Carolina. This kid Harrison, uh -huh. and he moved. He was in actually California, and he moved to North Carolina. And I was working on his technique with him when he was in California a little bit, and training him, giving him a training program. And then he would email me once a month his technique, 
Yeah. And we would get on shared Skype and I would just slow it down and say, look, this is where you're this and this is where you're that and work on this for another month and let's check it again. And you can see improvement as time goes on. It's good. Okay. Yeah. And the videos doesn't lie. You know what oh, I mean? no. So Everybody thinks, you know, hey, I'm doing it right. And then you yeah. see yourself on video and you go, oh my God, you know, it's normal. Yeah. I don't it's like totally to normal. Yeah, even I look at myself, you know, I'm trying out a new canoe behind the motorboat and I get the video and I look at myself, I thought I'd fix that, you know, but it's constant. You'll be working on it forever. It's like I told you earlier, it's like I, I film, get someone to film me, I'll make a turn, I'm thinking, oh, that was so awesome. And then I watch him like, dude, was I even turning or what? I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, so yeah. lame. So lame. Okay, so this is really helpful. This is perfect companion to the other video, okay. I think. Um, people can find you at Pua Kid Designs. Gmail.com. The, well, Pua Kid, your website is Pua Kid Designs. Your website is Pua Kid Designs, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks a lot. All right, you're welcome.